JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, submachine gun seized in Clarendon. The police yesterday seized a submachine gun during an operation in Sutton's district, Chapleton, in Clarendon. Lawmen said that about 4.50 p.m., officers were conducting an operation in the area during which a premises was searched. The police discovered the gun in a chicken coop on the premises. No arrest was made in relation to the seizure. Two men killed by cops. The police are reporting that two unidentified men were fatally shot during a confrontation with the police on St. Joseph's Road, Hunts Bay, in St. Andrew today. The incident happened about 4.17 a.m. The police said a firearm was also seized. The matter was reported to the Inspectorate and the Professional Standards Oversight Bureau and the Independent Commission of Investigations. Narrow escape as gas truck crashes on Spurtree Hill. Residents of Spurtree Hill are thankful that a major catastrophe was averted as a gas truck crashed into an abandoned house on Tuesday morning. Spurtree Hill resident Renee Brooks said that shortly before 10 a.m., she was awaiting transportation when she saw the truck descending the hill before crashing into the house. I was standing on the roadside seeking taxi to go to Mandeville when I realized that there was a truck descending the hill blowing its horn to signal that it had no brake, she said. While standing there, I realized that the truck driver was seeking somewhere to put the truck when he realized that he was losing control of the gas truck, she added. It is reported that the driver escaped. Firefighters and the police personnel cordoned off the area. The accident-prone Spurtree Hill Main Road is a major thoroughfare that links Mandeville and its environs to St. Elizabeth. Activities of relative of Child Heights triple murder victims may have caused their demise, says Kamish. All indications are that the brutal triple murder in Child Heights last week Sunday involving 81-year-old Aislinn McFarlane, her two grandchildren, 10-year-old Christina McFarlane, and a 6-year-old Michelle McFarlane was sparked by the activities of a relative, according to Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson. Anderson was answering questions from journalists during a Jamaica Constabulary Force press conference earlier today, where he said definitively that the incident was not just a random event. That killing shocked everyone with the brutality of it. We are following two directions in the investigation. This isn't a random event. We are not seeing this as just a home invasion where somebody was trying to commit a robbery and that sort of thing. This is unfortunate and gruesome, but it appears from what we are seeing so far to be aligned to the activities of a relative. I don't want to say anything more about it, Anderson said, before promising further updates whenever investigators have more concrete details on the case. At the same time, the commissioner highlighted that one of the largest gangs in the country, the Klansman gang that is based in St. Catherine, should diminish greatly in its influence, as roughly 60 of its key members are currently behind the bars and are scheduled to face trial in January. We are still active against them. I think two members were fatally shot last week and we have 60 or more members of that gang in custody. And we have been continuing operations against them. And we are looking particularly at their sources of funding. That is a very active case. My information is that we should be going to trial in January. And that is a large landmark case. This has caused some conflict within the gang. As people vie for leadership and other spoils. The gang is significantly degraded from where it was. Commissioner Anderson told journalists. 54 new COVID-19 cases in Jamaica. 54 people have tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. No deaths were recorded. The Ministry of Health and Wellness said the new cases comprise 32 males and 22 females, with ages ranging from 3 years to 94 years. These cases have pushed the country's tally to 10,864, of which 3,957 are active. Of the new cases, 19 are from Westmoreland, 11 are from St. Anne, 8 are from Kingston and St. Andrew, 
six are from St. Catherine, three each are from St. Elizabeth and St. James, two are from Hanover, and one each are from Clarendon and St. Thomas. The ministry classified all of the new cases as under investigation. Pay for it or lose it, NWC warns. The National Water Commission, NWC, is now enforcing a massive and widespread disconnection drive to collect outstanding payments from customers who have arrears with the utility company. Earlier this year, the NWC had made offers to delinquent customers to settle their arrears under the COVID assistance program, CAP. Under this arrangement, residential customers were offered a 30% discount to settle their debt. The Commission said the cap for residential customers was extended after it was running for three months. The NWC noted further that commercial customers were also offered a 25% discount to settle outstanding payments. The Commission said it had also taken the decision not to disconnect water supply during the initial period of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the Commission said prudent business practices now dictate that it ensures that delinquent customers who refuse to settle their debt come forward and honor their obligations. The company noted that based on its records, some customers are abusive of their arrangements in that they rack up huge bills, use excessive water, and refuse to engage the commercial department to work out a payment plan. Such situations must now be urgently addressed if the entity is to remain viable and provide a product and services that are crucial to the livelihood of the Jamaican people, the NWC said. Meanwhile, the Commission urged customers that non-payment of their bills could affect their credit ratings. It said that as of December 1, the company is empowered by law to provide credit information on its customers if such information is requested by business entities. The Commission also reminded customers to monitor their consumption patterns and check for leaks, especially during the Christmas period, not to waste water and to avoid high bills. Cloud still hangs over COVID payouts. After declaring in June that it has withheld payments in the sum of $5.4 million from 776 people who were terminated from the program for the advancement through health and education path, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is yet to provide evidence that the amounts have been written back in order to reduce the risk of loss. In an audit of the government's COVID-19 allocation of resources for employees care program in June, the ministry told the Auditor General's Department that the ineligible individuals were inadvertently included in the May 2020 payment owing to a glitch in the Beneficiary Management Information System. Five months later, the ministry is still struggling to clear up the issue with the Auditor General's Department. In a fresh audit of the care program, which was tabled in Parliament on Tuesday, Pamela Monroe Ellis, the Auditor General, stated that despite request, the ministry has not furnished the information requested. She said that subsequent checks with the ministry revealed that three of the terminated 776 individuals were also included in the June 2020 payroll. The Labour and Social Security Ministry also seemingly fell down on the job when it failed to present the majority of beneficiaries' files requested by the AGD for audit review. We selected a sample of 409 beneficiaries' files from four parishes, namely Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Catherine and Clarendon. However, only 167 beneficiaries' files, or 41% of the files requested, were submitted for review, Monroe Ellis said. The ministry indicated that the remaining 242 files representing payments totaling $1,592,000 could not be located at the time of audit. Monroe Ellis said that her department was unable to determine whether all the beneficiaries from the sample satisfied the eligibility criteria under the program. The AGD said it expected the ministry to maintain path beneficiaries' files with the required documents to justify the authenticity of payments. Further, the AGD was unable to verify 
the authenticity of payments totaling $30,200 to six beneficiaries in May 2020 because certain critical information was missing from their family file. The names of four of the payees were not included in the respective beneficiary files while the address of the other two payees were listed as unknown, the report said. Monroe Ellis said that her department could not verify whether these persons were legitimate beneficiaries. The audit found that the ministry's BMIS did not have adequate controls to identify duplicate records in the enrollment of persons on the path. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.